Thank you very much. Uh, today we're going to take a very uh, quick, rapid trip to the moon uh, on the back of Apollo 17. Uh, for uh, some of you, here's a little lunar souvenir. <laughs> we'll see if we can get it a little farther out there. How about this bunch over here? Let me try better. There you go. This, uh, this trip will uh, culminate in some thoughts about Mars. Uh, and, but uh, first of all, let me just uh, thank the uh, Starmus team, uh, Garrett, and everyone for the opportunity to be with you today. Uh, and I just I want to congratulate all of you. This is a remarkable assemblage of people who have come here for really a remarkable opportunity in Trondheim. Uh, the uh, Apollo 17 mission uh, began uh, with a uh, visit to Norway. In some sense, this uh, my experience as a geologist in western Norway and Sundmøre. Uh, gave me a, uh, a little additional, shall we say, leg up on my competition to become a scientist astronaut. Uh, and this valley, uh, you might say, in western Norway is not unlike the valley that I explored on the moon. <laughs> uh, that's a stretch, but it's, uh, it's fun to make those kind of stretches. The, uh, uh, the, uh, this picture just symbolizes really what was accomplished by Apollo. Uh, in the area of science, uh, the, behind me on the, uh, this picture is the South Massif of the Valley of Taurus Littoral, uh, and uh, represents what we learned through the exploration of the moon, uh, principally what we learned about the early history of the Earth, a time when life was forming, uh, replicating life forms were forming on this planet. Uh, the astronaut there, uh, symbolizes the technology leap that was made in order to accomplish uh, these missions uh, that uh, young Americans as well as their colleagues from uh, many countries of the world accomplished this as free uh, young men mostly, uh, but uh, women as well, uh, and free to think and to move forward ideas that were necessary to accomplish such a challenge. And then, of course, above the flag is the Earth. Uh, that, uh, as I indicated, represents a great deal of the knowledge that we gained as a result of our exploration of the moon. Uh, the Valley of Taurus Littrow that you just saw a moment ago is a valley deeper than the Grand Canyon of the uh, Colorado River in the United States. Uh, that mountain in the center of the picture there, the South Massif, is 2,100 meters high above the valley floor. Of course, it, before that valley filled with lava, it was even higher. Uh, the mountains on the other side of the valley go to 1,600 meters. So it's really a remarkable uh, place to be. Uh, the length of the valley that's shown in this picture is about 50 kilometers, just to give you an idea uh, of that. Uh, the, uh, whoops, wrong button as usual. Need a checklist. Uh, now, the enabling technology for going to the moon uh, it was the Saturn V moon rocket, shown here on the left. That rocket uh, weighed 6.8 million pounds, uh, fully fueled, but the, uh, three, uh, the five big engines in the first stage developed a total of 7.5 million pounds of thrust. And believe me, that's quite a ride. Uh, when those five engines are going, the vibration is as if you were driving down a railroad track at about 30 miles an hour. It uh, really was quite remarkable. And we reached about 4.5 Gs uh, at our maximum uh, launch acceleration. The, uh, the building in the, uh, on the right is the, uh, what's called the Vehicle Assembly Building. And if you get some idea of its scale, by in the lower right, there's a big fire engine uh, just sitting there. And uh, it really uh, gives you an idea of just how big these objects were. The rocket itself was well over 100 meters long. Long. And if you go to any of the three uh, NASA manned spacecraft centers uh, in southern United States, you will have a chance to walk under some of these rockets. And I strongly recommend that just to get an ideal idea of the scale. This is during our launch. Uh, it uh, very slow acceleration. It took 14 seconds 
for the rocket to clear that uh, launch tower that you see there. The, uh, and, and if you look closely on the left of the rocket, there, is a, uh, uh, there are some bright spots. Uh, those are big chunks of ice that are coming off the rocket as a result of condensation of the moisture in the Florida atmosphere on the cold uh, sides of, of the rocket where the liquid hydrogen and liquid oxygen uh, were stored. Uh, we had uh, stayed on the launch pad a, uh, an extra two hours and 40 minutes because of some confusion between the launch computer and the uh, people in, launch, uh, in the launch uh, control center. The launch control center, of course, was right. Human beings are right. We heard about robots earlier. And uh, <laughs> human, human beings usually make the right decision. They did in this case. The computer just didn't know they had made the right decision. Uh, the uh, spacecraft that we used are shown here. The uh, command and service module uh, in the upper right uh, was, uh, provided us transportation to and from the moon. And then the lunar module, Challenger, down in the lower right, is what we uh, worked with on the moon itself. Uh, in the process of getting there in three and a half days, I had the chance to take this uh, picture. It's become known as a blue marble picture. Still the most requested photograph from the NASA archives, as I understand it. Uh, gives you a nearly full Earth, not quite. Mediterranean at the top, Antarctica and South Pole at the bottom but some beautiful weather patterns that I enjoyed observing and, and uh, documenting on the way to the moon for th that three and a half days. Uh, as an amateur meteorologist, like so many in Norway are, uh, it, uh, uh, not only amateur, professional. You've had some remarkable meteorological history in your scientific professions. Uh, if you look very carefully up at the uh, upper right, there's actually a cyclone, a hurricane going ashore on the subcontinent of India. And those of you who know about the intertropical convergence zone will recognize that going along the equator. Uh, now, our uh, place of landing on the moon is shown by this arrow. It's uh, that deep valley that I've already shown you a picture of is located in a ring of mountains that surround a 740-kilometer diameter basin called Serenitatis. Uh, and for reference of where Neil Armstrong landed as the first man on the moon, I was number 12, uh, we were about 600 kilometers northeast uh, of that landing site. The, uh, 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 and back to the uh, valley itself, uh, this picture uh, was taken on the orbit of the moon uh, when we were in the uh, Challenger uh, just prior to landing. And the other spacecraft that you see there in the middle of the picture is uh, uh, the command module. Ron Evans, uh, the command module pilot, was all alone at this point, but was doing a very important job of sighting on landmarks in the uh, landing area that we then tied to the center of mass of the moon uh, based on uh, previous uh, uh, photogrammetric uh, analysis. Uh, of the lunar orbiter uh, photography taken many years before. And that uh, enabled us to uh, actually land almost exactly where we planned to land before we left the Earth. That uh, shows the landing, that arrow shows the landing site uh, actually uh, between a couple uh, large craters. The, uh, now this picture actually was not one taken by the Apollo mission, it's taken by a spacecraft that is currently in orbit around the moon, the uh, Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter spacecraft. Very high resolution. Uh, if you look very carefully, you can see our rover tracks up there. Uh, that may, and those rover tires are only about this wide. And that uh, uh, so it gives you an idea of about a 20 to 30 centimeter uh, resolution for that uh, photography. Now, my uh, tracks uh, wandering around there to the left of the descent stage of the Challenger that's now still on the moon uh, is uh, are wandering around a bit. I was searching for a place to deploy a set of scientific experiments called the Apollo Lunar Surface Science Package. And, and uh, I can see that I missed a couple of good places and finally ended up about 180 meters uh, from the uh, spacecraft. That was a little bit farther than we had originally planned. Uh, but nevertheless, we, uh, we did deploy the uh, the science package, and it operated for about seven years uh, after we left. Uh, this, uh, 
illustrates how much more information we now have about the moon, and as I'll mention later, uh, but even indeed about Mars, than we had before the Apollo program. And so uh, going back, is, uh, at least from that respect, is going to be easier uh, than uh, it was during Apollo. Still very uh, risky and very complex. My first view out the right-hand window of the lunar module is shown here, uh, looking uh, over a very typical lunar surface. Almost all the astronauts saw pretty much the same kind of scene at this point. Uh, scattered boulders uh, that are on top of a, of a layer of debris produced by meteor impact, a layer of debris that we call the lunar regolith. Uh, you don't need to remember that, there won't be a quiz. <laughs> uh, the, uh, the object in the foreground is one of 16 small restartable rockets, attitude control thrusters, uh, that we use indeed to control the orientation of our spacecraft while flying uh, in uh, uh, in lunar orbit and during the landing uh, process. Uh, those uh, thrusters had about 50 pound thrust uh, in contrast to the uh, 1.5 million pound thrust of the engines of the first stage of the Saturn V. So you can see the kind of technology spectrum that was required in, in propulsion uh, in order to accomplish the lunar landings. Uh, a couple uh, days later after two of our EVAs or excursions outside the spacecraft, this roughly the same picture shows how much that uh, area was disturbed uh, by our activities. And that, and those of you, how many of you want to go to the moon or to Mars someday? Just raise a show, show of hand. Ooh, we got a crew here. Uh, at least one, maybe more. The, uh, well, that's great. But on the moon, you're going to, and in and, and some places on Mars, you're going to have this problem of stabilizing surfaces if you're going to be using them uh, regularly. Uh, and there, go, there, are, there are engineering ways to do that. It's just one of those engineering tasks that you're, uh, some of you will have to uh, accomplish in order to uh, be there or, or even settle the moon. I, you know, I'm one of these people who thinks you can live there. There are plenty of resources, and, uh, and it's probably the best way to prepare to go to Mars, and we'll talk about that a little bit more in a moment. Now, in order to explore the moon, at least for three days, this is what we needed to have. Uh, we needed to have a place to live between our excursions, and that's the lunar module Challenger. Uh, and, and it also was our uh, stored in the, in the descent stage, the lower half of that. It stored our oxygen, water, and other things that we needed to uh, live there. 